And welcome back to coverage here at the Team Draft Super League. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. I've got Eric Froelich with me. Fro, first things first, yeah. how did the draft go? Awful. How'd it go for you? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Honestly, like, I don't have much of a frame of reference to compare it. Like, I don't... I think my deck's pretty bad just looking at it, but I kind of expected that. Like, after having talked to you and Luis and Ben and a lot of people about team draft and stuff, I kind of set my expectations that, you know, I shouldn't expect to have a really good, you know, Paul Cheon level deck here very often. So of course, I, yeah. I, think, I think it's okay. I, I don't yeah, know. It's not every day you get to sit to the left of John Finkel and just get it all. <laughs> so you're saying, so you think your deck's bad, but are you saying oh. that relative to, you know, what, a normal deck or whatever? Or are you saying, like, even for team draft, you're unhappy with it? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's tough to say because I don't know the set. You know? Yeah. So, like, I can tell you right now, my deck is bad. It has cards that are not great. But it, it's reasonably focused. Um, I lost track of how many picks I timed out on. Which I've never timed out on a pick before in my life that I remember. Wow. I, I really don't know how I... What I was... like. I guess I was kind of peeking at the All-Star game, but... <laughs> the, like there was too many packs. I was I had to read all the cards. Yeah, I don't know what they totally. do. I, I I don't know them yet. And so multiple times, like because the clock is so long on like the first pick, and we're you know we're kind of waiting around, and that you know, and and my first pick was all I first pick first pack Traveler's Amulet, which I don't even really think is much of a playable card. <laughs> Over over a three one for two, which I think is a better card. Obviously, what is going a, on here? <laughs> if it was an eight man, I mean, I, I like to play a lot of colors. It, it does leave me a little bit more open, and I don't really love the three one. Although it could be great. Like I, I, I mean, I know it's a it's a it's a good card. It's a three one for two with uh, with a good ability. Clearly, it's a good card. But there's a lot of ways to punish one toughness creatures. It looks like, and. Being aggressive in team draft is usually not where you want to be. So I had reasons for not really wanting to take the 3-1 first pick, although there's nothing I want to take. So I ended up taking a card that it didn't even make my deck, despite being an artifact. That's how bad it is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. There, there was multiple other times where I just timed out on my pick. Um, I don't think I passed you guys much. So I got that's that true. Before. I was sitting next to you, uh, and uh, you, you weren't passing to me in the first pack, but you were in the second one. And yeah, I mean, I felt like I was just scrapping together anything I could. And uh, you know, it's funny, some of the things that you almost take for granted in a regular draft pop up a lot more often here. For example, uh, you know, I'm like sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, this is coming together, like I've got some options, I'm gonna have to cut one of these colors. I ended up not, and thinking to myself, okay, so what do I need going into, like, maybe I'm a few picks into the second pack, and I'm like, I have, like, six creatures. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I need to make sure I keep track of, you know, how many creatures, like, if I get to the end and I've got nine or ten creatures or something like that, I'm in big trouble, right? Even if my spell quality is relatively okay. You know, you know how many rats you end up picking up. I know you got at least one, so. I did get, I did get one. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you have, like, four. In which yeah, case, I, you could probably get away with nine creatures. I just have the one, but it was weird. I, it, well, so the, the other thing is that I also at first picked the um, God Pharaoh's Gift. I have that's no the, idea what that means. So that's a seven mana artifact, and it says at the beginning of your a combat on your turn, you can get a card back from your graveyard, and you get to basically eternalize it for free, and it gets haste. So Does it it's die? The, mm -mm. It just sticks around? Oh, you yeah. get a free eternalized haste? Yeah. It's, All right. All right. it's disgusting. Yeah, I, 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 this is one of the, you know, I did some work research this weekend and, uh, and went to some of the free releases to try to figure out what cards were good. And I played against this card and I thought, I wonder if this card's even that good. And then my opponent just <laughs> annihilated me with it. And I thought when I sat down, I, I had a chat with uh, Kenji and Paul earlier today and I said, okay, guys, here's some of the cards that we really don't want to pass. And that was the first one on the list. And uh, I, I didn't pass it, obviously. But anyway, you need creatures, right? I need disposable. I need cards that are in the graveyard. And, and they have to be creatures to make that game plan work. And, you know, if I, if I don't have them, I don't. So all these crazy things that you have to think about for team draft. And then combining that with what you were just talking about, Eric, which is the, the Hour Devastation cards just came in. I mean, it came out on Magic Online yesterday. And I drafted all day, sure. But, like, I think I've done six or seven drafts, which... Okay, I'm pretty happy with that after just one day. That being said, it's not a lot. I don't know the intricacies of, you know, there's still a lot of cards that I, in fact, that I even opened here. And I'm just going, 
I don't know how good this card is. It doesn't look good to me. And I just had to kind of have faith in my initial evaluation of it. But, you know, anybody who's played a lot of limited knows that that initial evaluation is always subject to change. And uh, I'm going to find out either the good way or the hard way if, if I was right on some of those picks. Those are some sick brags about getting to be Marshall underscore LR while I had to be Efro Poker sitting at a poker <laughs> table for 13 hours yesterday while you're just drafting the night away. I did. I did. I totally did. All right. Okay. It sounds like the players are ready. And we got a nice one lined up. We've got Ben Stark. He's going to be playing against Kenji Egashira. Let's head down right now. And welcome back to coverage here at the Team Draft Super League. We've got round one action for you lineup. I'm Marshall Seckliff. I'm with Eric Froelich. And we've got a nice one, Ben Stark versus Kenji Egashira. This is Team Limited Resources versus Team Channel Fireball. And uh, looks like play players are ready to go here. Eric, taking a look at the opening hands, Ben looks to be, well, three colors we can see at least. He's uh, got a nice white uncommon there, Desert's Hold. That's a an arrest effect with some upside and then uh, you can see that he's blue black for the rest so I would, I, would, I would assume that he's probably just splashing that white card and then on the bottom Kenji looks like he's taken a mulligan to six and he is a blue red kind of tempo aggro type deck I will take your word for it it looks like Ben has five spells in hand and Kenji has four I can't tell you what any of them are but <laughs> they are there well I, I'll tell I, you I just realized based on who we're watching and the fact that you and I are in the booth the thing that I would most want to be tuning in for this week is our backup match <laughs> round one <laughs> I can't imagine there's anyone out there who doesn't want to be watching Luis versus Paul just like the highlight bloodbath just seeing whatever trash talk they have going on in the chat mostly yeah we'll keep an eye on that one for you guys as yeah, well as sure. we uh, work our way through here a Hopefully nice Kenji just gets Kenji. smashed real quick I wish he kept uh, that first hand it would have been even quicker yeah, well, you know, uh, that Cunning Survivor, generally more of a uh, kind of a tempo aggro card for Ben. Uh, whenever you cycle or discard a card, it gets plus one, plus oh, and can't be blocked this turn. But it's serving as a nice little one, three blocker because Kenji's first play was a Defiant Kenra, which is just a two, two with vanilla text. So, uh, you know, Kenji can't really get through. Now on end step, though, Kenji has a nice play, Nimble Obstructionist, which is a three, one flash flying rare. It also cycles... And if you cycle it, you can counter uh, a triggered or activated ability that you don't control, which is kind of cool, too. Yeah, that, um, that is one of the sweeter cards in the set, for sure. Not yeah. sure how good this, the Cycle effect is in Limited. Um, there's not that many. Pretty medium, yeah. But 3-1 Flyer for 3 is already pretty solid. With Flash, too. So, like, in this case... Uh, Kenji was able to play that card and like let's say Ben had Desert's Hold plus the planes which he just drew he wouldn't have had a chance to use it right away uh, as it stands though he, he has the planes now and Ben's in a really interesting position here because I think he's starting to make that early decision on do I need to start using my removal now actively or do I want to lean on what has to be one of the more powerful cards in his deck it's called Bantu's Last Reckoning it's one black black destroy all creatures and then his lands won't untap on their next untap step well, Kenji's got a pretty good response here. I mean, bouncing your creature, he gets to basically deal three damage because that's what that card does, I believe. It's an arrest where you gain three if you have a desert. Yep, that's exactly right, and he does. Yeah, he got to save that. Although although now Kenji's opened himself up to have countervailing winds counter his nimble obstructionist on the way back down, and it looks like that's what's going to happen here. Yeah, I think Oh, it Ben might happen. be a little bit... Of you know, disappointed, I guess, that Kenji is mana screwed in this game just because he would like these creatures to be hitting the battlefield so he can sweep them away. And then, you well, know, potentially leave up counter magic as well. Yeah, and, and it looks like Ben's going to be patient. Uh, he, he let the Nimble Obstructionist resolve. Oh, wow, Ben went deep. He's playing Hour of Eternity as well. That card seems just busted. Yeah, if you can cast it, which, by the way, Ben can. Yeah, right now... He Right now, he's got five, uh, six mana, but for five mana, he can basically, I believe he can just like basically eternalize a creature, right? That's what Hour of Eternity does. And then for every two mana beyond that, he gets to keep eternalizing more and more. 
I like yep. that game plan. Bantu's Last Reckoning into Hour of Eternity. <laughs> this is a tough one for Genji to beat, for sure. In the meantime... Uh, well, he's dealing three a turn here. He really his, is. One of his creatures has Eternal Eyes, which is, is pretty effective against removal. And it looks like Ben's actually just going to counter... Uh, excuse me. He's going to use Consign to save his creature. He's just bouncing this back to his hand. Yeah, and maybe, up his he, maybe he might want to. Yeah, that or he wants to cast uh, Oblivion, which is uh, a mind rot. That's pretty unexciting when you're facing down six power and you just bounced your block. Yeah, I, I agree. And I'm your not sure. Like so I, I'm not sure why he. I, I'm assuming we're going to see Bantu's Last Reckoning here. That would make the most sense. Yeah. But saving the cunning survivor, not super exciting. And this is a key play here in the game because you can see that Kenji's going to use once again a bounce spell proactively on his own creature to save it. And he's even got the mana to recast it this turn. Right, but Ben can counter that, right? Yeah, he's going to have to just settle for the proven combatant rather than that and the cunning survivor. Mm -hmm. And when Kenji goes for this nimble obstructionist, It'll get Kenji will know something's up since he knows that he's got the two drop in his hand. Yeah, I wonder if Kenji should have just said, okay, fine, I'm just not going to play it. I, I, it feels like that's probably not going to get the job done either. Like, if, if your opponent has a counter or removal spell, Kenji's hand is full of gigantic creatures, and this is the red split card it deals damage to, so... Yeah, it totally does. Uh, Kenji has a Gilded Ceridon, and remember Ben's Landstone on tap, and this is actually... Oh, is that game? Uh, not uh, quite. Literally, but yes. Yeah, not not literally, but yes. So he, but Kenji does have a Desert of the Fervent in his yard, so he is getting in for probably seven here. And yeah, he's going to put Ben to down to one, and then he gets to just sit there with Manticore of the Gauntlet and that, uh, I can't remember what the split card's called, but yeah, the front half of that is three and a red. Uh, you can counter, it does damage, to the controller of target spell. So like if somebody, if he puts anything on the stack, Kenji can just fire that off and kill Ben. So cool plays there by Kenji, you know, using those bounce spells, not to get blockers out of the way like you'd uh, normally see it, but instead to save that nimble obstructionist twice. And uh, it did the majority of the work here. And now he's got himself in a position where Manticore of the Gauntlet or the, the split card is, is going to really get the job done for him. All right. Yeah. Kenji's going to take this game and, and it kind of, didn't really look like he had a great chance of doing so. He was very much leaning on a, the 3-1 flyer. Ben had the Wrath kind of in his opening hand. He had, you know, a few other ways to potentially deal with it, including an arrest that could have gained him life. And you know, Kenji just cast Tempo plays while stuck on three lands, and Ben's deck looked real bad. Yeah, and now Kenji knows that the way is clear. He's going to just cast Mas Manticore of the Gauntlet because there's nothing for one blue mana that does anything. And that's going to end the game. Go, Kenji. Yeah. Yeah, that, the opening hands and, and the way the game kind of played out, it felt like Ben should have been really advantaged, and it just wasn't close. Like, Kenji won easily. Yeah, strange. I mean, Ben definitely took a, a conservative line. He didn't, you know, really want to add much to the board. He knew he was going to set up a wrath, and when your opponent has one mana ways to kind of save their creature, especially when you can recast it at instant speed, and it has three power end evasion, which Ben couldn't deal with, it was just too good. So the three one flyer just really did yeah. work there. You know, I Kenji's think this deck looks the key play great. though. Remember when um, when Ben went to kill the nimble obstructionist, and then Kenji bounced it, and then Ben could have countered it on the way back down, but didn't. Well, he did. He did not counter it, right? No, he did counter it. Right? No, the first time. The, the, did he <coughs> go for it uh, to kill it the first time, and then Kenji used Winds of Rebuke? Yeah, and that was he didn't have the mana that time. That was when he cast oh. like the arrest on like turn four or five. Oh, okay, okay. So I, I don't think he had the mana to cast it. Nor, okay, I, yeah, gotcha. No, he, he would have had enough cards in his graveyard. All right, yeah. Well, that nimble obstruction is really put in <coughs> for Kenji. Oh yeah. oh yeah, that was really strong. And it is one of his better cards, to be fair. I mean, it's a rare. I mean, at the end, it, it's a three-one flyer for three. It's not, you know. Yeah, Overly his outstanding. I mean, like obviously, his deck Flash is a good thing to have. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm just saying his yeah. deck's not great. <laughs> fair, fair. Good point. Good point. So, Kenji's got what looks like a pretty good opener here. Next, this time he's got a Talkrap Skirmisher for turn two, and then his two bounce spells plus Magmaroth, 
which is, you know, looking at the looking at the opening hand, assuming that Kenji can hit those land drops, it's just a five five for four. Like that's just yep. it's just going to be a five five for four. So lands for Kenji look really good off the top. Now on the other side, though, Ben has Bantu's reckoning last reckoning again, which by the way he did not open. That was passed to him. Yeah, that I was. I know who passed it to him too. Several people, indeed. <laughs> At least one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Luis opened that one, and, and Ben got it third. So no, I, I, I think Paul opened that, and Ben and passed it to Ben. Well, in there the was chat, Luis said that he opened it and passed it to Paul. So maybe there's two, because I haven't actually uh, seen the list. But well, no, was are you sure he was talking about Bantu's last reckoning? Because there's another sweeper in white. Yeah, that yeah. Also it was definitely the black ones. One. It was the black one. Okay. By the way, Kenji has hit all of his land drops here, and he is going to try to hit that last one by playing a tormenting voice. And he did. Ramanop Ruins comes in untapped, and he'll be How able to play cards? that Magmaroth. The those deserts? Yeah. I like them. I think they're actually pretty good. Yeah, like in a deck like this, look at I mean, we saw how close these games can be, and I think that it's gonna be pretty good here. Ooh, countervailing wins for Ben. Oh, but nothing in his graveyard. <laughs> yeah, not the best. Nope. So I guess that Ben if is just going to have to fire off the Bantu's Last Reckoning next turn, right? Yeah, it's just such, such a tough spot because, you know, it, you time walk yourself too. Yeah, for so sure. If, if Kenji has a good follow-up, Ben can't do anything about that. But I guess he does have the bounce spell in his hand. Is that a compelling argument? It is. Exciting. Yeah, I'll probably see him cycle that too. So there's the Bantu's Last Reckoning. Ben, not messing around this time. Yeah. Well, he, he learned what can happen if you take an incidental 12. <laughs> Here's the right, Ben's got to be pretty happy sure. about that being the, the best follow-up possible. For sure. Ben deciding not to cycle his compelling argument just yet. And you can see why he gets to just kill the 2-1 there with his consign. And all of a sudden, Ben looks like he's in great position, though this Manticore of the Gauntlet may have something to say about it. Yeah, I'm not sure how great his position is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, with two bounce Cards are not exciting. Or with a bounce oh. spell in hand and a and a removal spell in hand for Kenji, he actually does look like he's in a pretty fine position here. Yeah. Although Ben does have a counter, it's not really turned on. No, it does it for, for two the right ones. now. Yeah. Ben would love to just be able to get a trade in here. Stocks up his graveyard a little bit. Yeah, Ben using his mana efficiently earlier by not cycling Compelling Argument and instead playing Consign, but now he's won fewer cards in his graveyard for his uh, countervailing wins as a result. Yeah, he hasn't had a good opportunity to cycle it, really. I mean, he also only has one blue mana available to him. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's a cycle here, should Kenji pass. And that will set him up to have you know at least one more card in his graveyard for potentially... Pre Ooh, there's another block or two, which is not, not bad to have. Yeah, and Kenji looks like he's trying to set up the, wow. the split card yeah. that he's got here. So, oh, wow, Ben's just one mana short of being able to do everything with counter backup because he could play Festering Mummy, play the Plague Belcher, put a counter on the Manticore. So now he's got a 5-4 against the 3-2, deal a point of damage with Plague Belcher, and play Bone Picker for one mana. But, but he is one mana shy of, of leaving up counter oh. backup to go with that. So... We'll see what he actually decides to do. He'll probably just do that. Having a 5-4 Menace and a 3-2 Flying Death Touch while shrinking your opponent's creature to a 3-2 is a pretty good spot. And it looks like Kenji is going to try to set up that, that split card and try to get in for a chunk of damage here. The most he could get in for with that line is 4, but you know if Ben somehow plays the Horror of the Broken Lands, he could, uh, he could, get, it, he could get him for 5. Yeah, Ben just kind of weighing his options here. This is a tough turn for Ben. He really has a lot of options ahead of him. Like you said, that perfect They're line not, not available to him. But these are all good, you know, lines or choices, right? Yeah, I mean, when, you know, your kind of fallback scenario is being able to, you know, put eight power on the board and, you know, really stop the bleeding, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, you know, Kenji has four cards in hand, and we've seen this deck is capable of dealing a ton of damage. Ben's already down to nine. You know, probably hasn't played the format all that much, so still figuring things out. 
And it looks like Luis has just taken the match against Paul. So Yeah, two quick games. Paul's pretty unhappy with his deck. I don't know who's happy with their deck, although Luis's yeah, deck is is pretty good. Is it blue think, black? Is he blue black? No, he's white black zombies. And I think white you guys cut both the, the gold zombies in both sets from him. But I did. yeah. Well, one of them was going the other way, but I don't think he did not get the wayward servant that was open somewhere. Okay, yeah, I didn't so he see that. He would have gotten it like he would have gotten it like Did you not open it? No, Maybe not I, I might have opened it. So, yeah, I, I it did not get to him fifth. So, I think Paul might have cut that. Man, this this incidental damage is really adding up here for Kenji. He's got Ben down to five. He's yep. also got uh, the um, the Ramanok ruins down there that he can activate. You know, with depending on his land draws here twice this game and get Ben to one. Oh, wow. oh, Ben doesn't have a desert, does he? Uh, he does not. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That three life would have been so good for Ben. I don't know now, how many deserts Ben has in his deck. There was quite a few in the draft. I don't know how many he actually took. Yeah. Desert's hold still looks fine here. I mean, the the uh, Gilded Ceridon is a is a big pain. It's going to, you know, force a trade of some sort down on the ground. And in this, and as it actually sits, it wouldn't even force a trade because I think Kenji would just go for Unquenchable Thirst and then just crash in for the win. So Ben's going to really have to lock down this Gilded Ceridon now while he still can. This is just kind of a Ooh, tough spot. I mean, Ben has attacking. to get aggressive because of what Kenji's deck is capable of and the fact that, you know, we have four damage just kind of already sitting there in play. Yeah. But it's a line that is very likely to lose. So Ben knows that he is a huge underdog. It's not like he's making this play because this is, makes me 70%. It's like, no, he, he understands that. He is losing this game, so he's got to try wow. to figure out a way to, to close it out. Look at this, um, too. The, wow. the yeah, countervailing counter wins doesn't, it doesn't counter it. Well, he's got a cycle card. Oh, he's just going to cycle first. I see. So that's that's big for Ben Stark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he got that the keep, other bone picker, too. Yeah, he's bone picker flooded. <laughs> that's a good place to be. <laughs> well. All right, so the game not over yet. What is... Okay, so Kenji has a counter in his own hand, of course. Not finding island, found red source number five. It's a little bit punishing. Yeah, so Kenji just gets to play Bloodlust and Cider, and that is a really scary card from Ben's perspective because any creatures off the top for Kenji just come crashing in immediately. Oh. And with Ben's life total at five, maybe three, maybe one, depending on how the Ramanop ruins pans out, he is in a very, very tough spot. Does, does Ben attack here? Yeah, he's got to keep attacking. He does have Bone Picker, which is nice to block. Oh, yeah, he's got the the discard, too. Yeah, hmm. he's going to make Kenji discard the countervailing wins. Interesting. So that shuts him off from actually being able to attack or play Bone Picker. Ooh, yeah, that's tough. He can't take one more point of damage because the desert, I mean, that no. deals two to anything, right? Or is it yeah, just, it, players? Just, just players? Just players. Just players. Okay, so it can't kill a Bone Picker. So that's good news for Ben. Yeah, but well, but, you're, good news, but you're, what you're still right. what does this aftermath uh, do? It copies an instant or sorcery spell, and you can choose okay. new targets. Okay. Yeah. Definitely so, something to be aware. This has been a sweet game. So there's a striped river winder for Ben Stark. And that is certainly going to give him the confidence to jam. And, you it's know, he the, does uh, have a lot of power out. It's a hexproof 5-5 five, five for 7 mana. Okay, so I assume Kenji's going to throw a desert here. There's yes. no need to have 7 mana on the battlefield. Oh, he didn't do it. Interesting. Yeah, I thought he would, too. And can you just misclick? That's what the card does, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. It's 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 two red red. Oh, it, it may be at sorcery speed only. Well, sorcery speed, he certainly would have done it on his turn, though. Yeah, I just that's what I was thinking. I'm just surprised that that didn't happen during that turn cycle. He did he it did now. The sorcery speed since he did it now. I don't know. Yeah, it must be sorcery speed. Yeah. Well, there's a thirst without a desert. Mm -hmm. So it remains thirsty. Indeed. So I assume Ben's just going to crash in here with both creatures. He's going to force a chump block. He's going to be able to play the bone picker. And hope. 
Although it's pretty likely. I mean, th- this desert is is active, quote unquote, but it costs four mana to use and sacrificing itself, right? So it, he can only play a one mana spell. So he would die to like a magma spray, mm-hmm. a, a red cartouche, or unsummon. Those are the cards I can think of in the format. Yep. There might be more in uh, an hour that I just don't know of yet, but it seems unlikely that there's too much more than just unsummon. I don't think they printed another magma spray, so. They didn't. Well, they did. Point. It it just costs four now. Well, trying to name the one mana spells that might exist. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's 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 so not that. It, it's possible that Ben just chooses not to attack with both. Um, might be a little bit safer. Let's see. So what's his game plan if he doesn't attack at all? Then. Well, he's definitely attacking. Something. Oh, you're saying to attack with just one? Okay. Right. Like by attacking with both, you're forcing a chump block, which is generally a nice place to be for obvious reasons. But, you know, you, you are susceptible to a number of spells I just named. Um, and and the thinking would be that he's not susceptible to those? That's what he has to figure out. Uh, so he gets to play the Bone Picker. If he just attacks with Plague Belcher, Kenji falls to four. Oh, this thing is an Afflict creature. Yes, it is. Oh, pff, never mind. So if he no, just attacks with a prowess both. creature. It, it yeah, actually so he's just dead. I, I forgot too. Yeah, yeah he's, so he's actually just straight up dead. Yeah, yeah. Because any blocks from Ben Stark would put him down to one, and then Kenji can activate the Ramanop runes and sacrifice itself. Yeah, I mean, not having the wow. desert. Yeah, I forgot about Afflict on that. Yeah, it turned out that draw was just a great draw. It he really needed to was. find a, a, yeah. a two drop that could deal that could yeah. deal one point of damage and. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we were talking about uh, this incidental damage adding up, and boy, has it here, right? I mean, Ben was at like nine, and you know, he's taken four from the ruins, and now two from this uh, active from the trigger there, and it's just bang, he's dead. Kenji wins. Wow, wow, that was close. Yeah, I totally forgot about a flick on that card as well. I remember that it had prowess, and I'm just like, right, it has a flick, so really gives Ben no options there. It's my uh, first it's time small. seeing that card. And yeah, it's, it's small, and I did not have my glasses on. So. New set. But it looked like there was another word under there. I thought it had prowess, and apparently it's got two abilities, which is uh, even better than one. Yeah, and, you know, that is a type of card that underperforms a little bit in the early stage of the game. You know, a two-on with prowess is something amazing. But, you know, when you have the ability to chip in damage, get in for three in the air with flyer, then it dies. Okay, fine, no problem. You know, get one attack in with the Ceridon that allows something else to hit play that split card for red and all of a sudden Ben's life total is just inching down. And then, you know, all of a sudden he's like activate this desert. Okay. I'm from five to three. And now all of a sudden any of flip creature starts to look very good as it just doesn't give Ben any options outside of just straight up having removal, which of course you, you just don't get to have removal for every creature your opponent plays. Uh, he actually you know. drew the removal spell, but again, like if he had a desert at some point in that game, he would have gained three life. He would have tapped down the creature. It would have been over yes. on multiple fronts. Long, long time ago, but uh didn't happen. Yeah, that was the key. And that incidental life gain as well. I've been talking about the damage side of it, but boy, mm-hmm. that, that incidental life gain can really go a long way as well. Okay, well, it looks like that's going to do it for, uh, for the first round of action here. So we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll have more Team Draft Super League. Don't go anywhere. Looking for a challenge? Magic Online 